Okay guys, we're out here uh, gonna do some vlogs today. Um, haven't been here in a while. This is Lake Nasameno, central coast of California. Kind of weird conditions. We're here in uh, pretty much late summer, but the wildfires that are pretty much inundated in California right now has kind of created like this almost a, a false kind of overcast. So uh, we're gonna see what happens real quick. I gotta say thanks to all the firefighters and first responders for keeping everybody safe. But uh, we got a variety of topwater baits, uh, spotted bass, mix a large mouth a little bit. Uh, so it should be a fun day. We're gonna kind of see how it happens. But uh, real quick, I haven't been here since January. The lake's down obviously like 75 feet. So I got my Garmin Echo Map. Um, really quick and simple. They have an offset feature for lake level. So it's really simple. I go to menu, layers, water down the lake level and now i could press that and i could either so if you're on a body of water and the lake's up you can actually you know ride, raise up the the contour lines the water level but we're in a negative so 75 feet is approximately i research on my phone done done now what that did was it 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 pretty much took the water away so everywhere you know obviously is, is red is on the bank now so uh, here's my contour lines. Now I know we're safe to run. So a real quick, simple thing. Now we're ready to go fishing. Let's get it done. This pocket right here can be good. The bait's in these little swings. Oh. Little guy. Little guy, finally. Spook's almost as big as him. Well, it's a start, but they get a lot bigger in here than that. Usually when they eat the front hook like that, um, that you got the right color. They like what you're throwing. They just need to get a little bit bigger. That's that's what another thing I do. So this here is just a regular, let that one go, just a regular spook, super spook. And what I do is is I like putting a bigger hook right here on the front because with a, with a walking bait like that, it's going to stay in the water anyway. It's not a bait that gets up or it doesn't affect the action. So I put like a this here is a number two, and I got four. And again, with a number two on the back. So I change those out and then it doesn't, you can't hang up those hooks. And I like that bigger hook for when they slash at it or whatever. Um, just a little, little added confidence that, you know, bigger hook, I got more opportunity to hook them actually. A lot of times, especially with these spotted bass, they're, they're coming up so fast on it that they'll miss it or you know, barely get a hook in them. So. I like oversizing my hooks and have better better hookup ratio a lot of the times. What's weird though is that that fish was kind of out here on this main stretch and I feel like they should be in these like little pockets and and uh, mouths of these little creeks and stuff like that because I've seen a lot of bait on my live scope and that's where all the bait's at and that's where the fish are at. Like here I'm seeing a bunch out here suspended. There's one. Oh, there's a bunch right here. You see them right there? Oh, gosh, dang it. I pulled it away from him. Look at that. That's a good one. Got him. Got him. I pulled it away from him the first time. He's not a good one. I think there was four or five of them in there. This is the last like, one dock back in this pocket. They're skinny, man. Let's see if I can pull them away. A lot of times what you'll do is, these fish this time of year will be like in little packs and schools. And hopefully we didn't pull that little school off, off that dock and we can throw it back in there real quick and get another one. I hope. Because that first one that bit wasn't, wasn't that little guy. It. 
gosh dang it came off came off we teased that one in the biting got a foul hook I just <laughs> These aren't the kind. Oh, come on. Why am I not chasing? Attack warehouse curse. I didn't even get a bite. Finally, a little spook. It was bouncing around forever. The fish is all jacked up. Finally, trying to find a big school of them. I've seen a bunch on the live scope, but they're all kind of fighting, not wanting to, you know, fish down but we may have to because they're not really wanting to come up a bunch. But we'll see, I mean, you can see them right here, dude. The whole pack of them followed it in. They're just moving all over the place. God. Okay, well, been, let's see, probably about two hours. We've kind of jumped around different areas of the lake. I'm kind of forcing this top water bite because A, it's really fun to catch them on and uh, usually it's the deal this time of year you know kind of late summer uh, I just haven't seen any activity like haven't seen them schooling haven't seen them pushing bait um, so still though it's 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 one of those deals where I feel like we got the right kind of conditions um, I'm just mixing it up a little buzz bait a little uh, plopper style bait a spook um, I got a pompadour on and I, I really feel like eventually I'm gonna run across them, but you know, haven't done that yet, just kind of singles here and there. Um, what I have been noticing though on my, on my live scope, ton of fish, like we're around fish, um, they're just really kind of down in the, in the water column. They're pretty close to the bottom, um, out there in anywhere from 15 to 20 feet. So made to just be this weather turned them off. You know, it's as cold as it's been, shoot for, five or six months now. So maybe that kind of hurt them. I mean, I always got a ton of excuses why they don't bite, but uh, we're just gonna keep plugging along here and uh, hopefully run in, you know, find an active school. If not, we'll pull out some uh, other techniques and go back to some of those same areas that I've seen a bunch and try to catch them. And one on the buzz bait. Slurped it. Oh, wow. first one on a little buzzer, little baby double buzz. This is actually, I mean, they're long and skinny, but man, that's only like a pound and a half fish. Well, that's kind of cool. That's the first one on the, this here is a little prototype Brabeck sent me. Uh, Maybe by the time this vlog's out, I think Tackle Warehouse is going to have them. It's just a smaller profile. I like that big double buzz, but that little baby buzz is pretty cool, you know. And a lot of guys, like, they, they kind of think, like, spotted bass, right? Uh, spooks, wake baits, small little poppers and things like that. Spots love buzz baits. Um, so just different look. Hopefully that wasn't just a, what we call a ghost fish, like one random one. Oh, there's another one. So maybe it's not a ghost fish. It's two back-to-back -back casts. That's kind of cool. Just the size is lacking. I mean, fun to catch, but uh, it's exciting catching them on top. Let that one go. Let's we'll see if we can go three for three. Maybe. Don't want to get cocky, though. Little guy, they're just little ones. 
Oh, a little large mouth. Oh, shoot. This is a little large mouth. So years ago, like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, this lake didn't have any spotted bass and there was a bunch of large mouth, small mouth. Um, wasn't until, like I said, you know, within the past 15, 20 years, the spots got in here. And it's just changed the way the largemouth kind of set up and where they live. Um, you know, it's there's still some big ones in here. A few, few years back, I know a couple of guys that have caught some fish over 10 pounds, you know, largemouth. So it's kind of cool. It's encouraging too because the lake, the past few springs here, it's, it's filled up. And during the spring, it gave those fry a lot of area to kind of hide out in and, and uh, so more and more guys have been catching you know some decent largemouth so that's that's a good sign so we're getting some bites now but now we just need to get the bigger ones oh there's a good one that's a good one right on the bank dude right on the bank Nice fish, a little bit better. Oh, almost got a two minute violation. That's the whole deal, trailer hook. That fish came up and slashed on it. Without that trailer hook, I probably wouldn't have hooked him. So, a little bit better. Look how long that fish is. So, getting a little bit better. That fish absolutely crushed it, like right on the bank. I mean, that's what's cool. Like, like you know, that spook. To me, it's kind of more of a off the bank kind of thing. You know, I mean, you throw it next to objects like trees or rocks or something. But this buzz bait caught what three or four now, right, right in a row, and pretty much they've all been within maybe a couple feet of the bank. <clears throat> what I'm kind of looking for. Like back down the way behind us, there was a couple of rocks that I seen, you know, visually seen out, out off of the bluff. And I'm just kind of throwing it as close as I can to the bank, just like that. And then when I get around like a, like a target like that, I'll just kind of make that buzz bait, the blades kind of jump a little bit more. And that kind of causes them to react to it. So just kind of keeping it slow and steady and then when I get around something, I'll pop the rod and you see how it kind of makes it spurt. And that's how several of those fish have bit. Um, but it's just a different pro profile, you know, like a whopper plopper style bait or something like that. Um, it's just, everything's a different sound. So if you're in an area and you're a lot of boats fishing around, everybody's throwing top water, try to think outside the box, think of a different top water bait, make it a different sound or a different, uh, tracks different in the water and you're probably gonna get more bites. Oh gosh, dang, that's a good one. That's a good one. That was so cool. Ugh, that was a nice one, man. Dude, so, man, that one got it. The old pompadour. So, I was just talking about the buzz bait and how you want to find a different topwater bait than what everybody else is throwing. Well, there's a boat, actually, that was fishing down this same bank um, ahead of us, and I could hear they were throwing either a buzz bait or a plopper and uh, came right behind him, I'm talking like five minutes behind him, changed up the bait, caught a nice one. So that's pretty cool. I thought it was a lot bigger when it bit. So that's neat. Let that one go. There's way back in there. The little guy though little guy but he's way back in there like that's the end of the lake you slurped it as far as you can throw man the lake is dropping 
I don't know how many how many inches a day, but it's dropping definitely. And you would think, you know, all these fish would be pulled out. That was as far as you could go in the lake. I mean, this is the end of the river. Just a little guy. Look at him. Tricked him. Whoa. Fooled him. He blew up on it like three or four times. You know, like this kind of bait, a spook, you're, you can leave it in their strike zone. So like, for example, that fish ate me four times or tried to eat it four times. And if you get in a hurry and you reel it in and you go to make another cast, a lot of time that fish is gonna lose interest. But with that kind of bait, it's not like a, let him go. It's not like a buzz bait or a whopper plopper or a, you know something you're retrieving across the surface like a pompadour. Um, with that, a lot of times if you just dead stick it, like one misses it, and you just let it sit there. More often than not, you know they're gonna come back and try to eat it again. That that one took me four times before I actually hooked it. So you know, and if one does miss it, like what I did with that, that fish missed it, and I just kind of gave it another little twitch and he'd come up on again, another little twit, like a hard twitch, just to kind of entice them. Don't work it out of their strike zone. Just kind of let it sit there, and a lot of times they'll come back and eat it. All right, so I want to go over the gear that I used to, to fish the topwater baits this morning. Um, we had several bites, and mainly just three baits, pretty much, but uh, this here is a super spook. Everybody knows about them. They're still one of the best fish catchers of all times. Oaky Shad in color, it's my personal favorite color. Um, and I mentioned before in the vlog that I oversized that front hook. So that's a two-aught trocar, put, put a nice feather hook on there. These are number fours. Um, and the rod that I like throwing it on is kind of, I guess, unconventional because I do throw it on braid. So I'm throwing it on a seven foot seven, uh, medium heavy. It's actually a crankbait rod. Um, and the reason I like that longer seven foot length, you know, any, any rod between seven to seven and a half foot will get the job done as long as you have the right bend. Treat it like a crankbait if you're gonna throw braid. The reason being is because braid has no stretch um, and going back to the rod length, you can make super long cast and then when you, when you hook one way out there, you have a lot more leverage, a lot more power to set the hook on those fish. Um, now, getting back to the braid that I just mentioned. So what I do is, this here is 50 pound FX2. Um, what I do is I run a leader. This is 25 pound Supernatural uh, by Sunline. So I put a nice FG, run that leader. I just like that because the monofilament will float in the water. So the braid, it tends to kind of drag down a little bit and it'll wrap around that front hook. I have no problem, problems, no issues with that monofilament. So it's a great combination. I like 25 pound test, big bait, you know, uh, big line, big rod, big everything. So, and then the reel, this here is just a seven to one Tatula Elite. Super, I mean, I could bomb this thing as long as I, as far as I can. Um, and it's got the right drag. It's got the complete package. So there's that. Okay, so the Pompadour. Um, I have a lot of confidence in this bait. I caught really nice fish on it. Um, even throughout the winter, it's big ones seem to be attracted to it. It's got a nice side-to-side -side wobble. Uh, the prop gives it extra commotion, which is, I mean, for me, I feel like I can draw fish. It, it just pulls them to it. Um, and uh, this is a new color, came out maybe a year or two ago. Uh, generally, I like throwing black and bone, but this here is a new color. Uh, it's just kind of a natural, you know, they're feeding on shad right now. So I like that a lot. Um, with this, I'm throwing 50 pound FX2 braid straight. No leader needed. When you're fishing this bait, you're kind of keeping your rod up a little bit. So the line is never touching the water. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, the rod I am throwing it on is a seven foot five, medium heavy. It's my signature ritual angling rod. It's kind of, it's my, pretty much my all purpose reaction bait rod. It has the right tip. You don't want a real fast rod like a fast tip, you know, heavy power, uh, just because it's gonna over, you're gonna overfish that bait for one. And when you hook one with these treble hooks, if you don't have the right bend, it's gonna pull them loose. So you got that nice bend in the rod and then the reel is same, well, 
What I kind of do is with the pompadour and the buzz baits, I tend to always want to throw six three to one gear ratios just because they're slower moving baits. And I, if I need to, I can speed them up, but I like to go. So I like, I like the reel to be able to, if I'm winding it, I feel like, you know, the reel is doing the work for me. I'm not having to slow myself down because if you overfish this bait or the buzz bait, you're not gonna get as many bites. So there's that. Now we move on to a little baby Brightbeck double buzz. Uh, there's several other companies that make a similar style buzz bait. It's just a smaller profile. You know, we're, we're kind of here uh, late summer. They've seen buzz baits all summer long for months. And so that little bit different profile, it makes more of a soft kind of buzzing sound than an in your face kind of real aggressive. Um, so I have a lot of confidence in that. I just got a little, I think this is a Zoom Z-Hog trailer um, and, and the trailer hook. So that's, that's essential. Anytime I'm throwing a buzz bait, especially when there's no grass, and even if there is grass, I, I mean, a lot of times those fish are coming up, you know, and, and they're so aggressive on it that they'll miss it. So when you have a trailer hook, you're just increasing your odds. You know, if I'm it, later on in the year, I'm going to throw a treble hook on here when there is no, you know, uh, grass or things to get that treble hook snagged on. So throwing straight braid, this is 60 pound FX2 by Sunline. And again, the gear ratio is six, three to one, just because I want to keep that bait more natural. Um, you know, it, if I overfish it and I'm going too fast, I'm not giving those fish a good chance to get that, get that bait. The rod is a seven foot five heavy. I like that heavy action for a buzz bait because it's all, I mean, that's a heavy duty frame. You got big, big braid and, you know, basically hook them and winch them in is the deal. Uh, six, three to one, seven foot five heavy action rod. And I'll give you a little tip here. This here will save you a lot of time for these trailer hooks. I just thought about this. So this here is a little hook pal deal that we have at Tackle Warehouse. These little discs right here, simple. You put them right in there, put your trailer hook on first, put that disc in here and you push down and that disc just pops in there right in the middle. You can adjust it. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put a disc on the back side as well as the front side. Now you can kind of lock that in, that trailer hook into position. So it's kind of a cool little, little deal I learned about. No more surgical tubing and big messes and that, that's worked really good for me. Okay, so one more setup that I want to try. I mean, based on the conditions, there's no wind. Uh, you know, the, I see some little tiny bait kind of surfacing here and there. Uh, so I got out a little SK Pop by Jackal, a little popping style bait. Uh, you know, I have a lot of confidence in it. I've caught some giants on it over the past few years, you know. But um, one thing I do different is I put a little O-ring on there. I don't know if you can see that. So I like that rather than tying straight to the line tie that it comes on the bait, just because it frees up the action. Um, you know, I can give it a side to side or a straight pop. And what that does is it helps eliminate that line from going on the back side of your treble hook. And now you got, you know, you're wasted a cast basically. Um, the line, so I just started throwing this maybe a couple years back. It's Defire by, by Sunline. Really good monofilament. I kind of like that. I don't know if you can see it here kind of that grayish brown color. Um, you know, and again with the monofilament, what it's doing is it's keeping that bait on the surface. It's not, some of the lines like fluorocarbon and even some braid will pull, will actually sink in the water and you're gonna pull that bait down and it's not gonna act right. So that's the reason for the monofilament. Um, using the same rod and the same reel as I did with the Pompadour, my seven foot five signature series, you know, with a, with a really light bait like this, I have buddies that throw them on a 610, you know, bait casting rod, a medium to medium heavy, anywhere, anywhere between that 610 and that seven foot five range is gonna do the job and the same reel, seven one gear ratio. And uh, so we're gonna give it a shot and see what, see if they're gonna bite it or not. There's one. Another giant. Still fun though. It's a jackal escape pop. I like these little poppers. 
you get better better action from it when you have more freedom up by the nose of the bait. You can see there, it's just a little ring up, up, up there, real close, and kind of separates the line from the line tie. And it'll give it more of a walking action too. And it's so light that it doesn't, you know, you're not pulling the nose of the bait down, so it doesn't matter. There's one. There where he should have been. The little guy. Oh, look at him with it. Let's see if I can catch two. There's a bunch of them with it. Okay. Dang it. Just a little guy. I switch up to a little popper. Had a good bite. Somehow my line got in the O-ring and, uh, <laughs> and it came off. But uh, just a little guy. But we're gonna kinda, I think, make a little transition. We're still gonna keep a top water in hand. And, uh, but I'm gonna rig up a few down baits and cause I keep seeing them out deeper, like I keep saying. Still gonna throw the top water, but uh, gonna try to put some more fish in the boat. Um, if you guys like what you've seen, make sure and like it. Uh, if you have any comments, like if I'm screwing something up or you, you wanna know something different or a different type of vlog, let us know. Um, comment down below and uh, stay tuned. We're gonna go catch some more fish on some different techniques.